it's 70 degrees Fahrenheit. That means it's time to split my hives. I need to split my hives. They desperately need split. Today I'm going to give you tips and tricks and timing about making splits. To split or not to split. It seems to be way too early and yet it's 70 degrees. What's the forecast going to be? These are all tough questions. If I wait too long, then they might swarm on me. I'm going to lose half my colony in a swarm and they're going to be gone. But if I go ahead and split them now and they won't swarm, I can save my colonies from swarming. It's a tough dilemma. And they just started producing drones. Look at that. I found a drone flying outside the hive today. Hey guys, thanks for joining me. I'm David Burns and I want to talk to you today about what do you do about making splits? How early can you make them? Can you make them too early? Is it devastating? Do you want to make splits now or do you want to wait and risk a swarm losing half your colony? These are the tough things to ask this time of the year when you're coming out of winter and you're coming into spring. You're trying to prevent the swarm, which we all know is almost impossible. But we also know that we want to keep our hive strong so we can make a lot of honey. And it's a tough thing to kind of negotiate. Today I'm going to give you tips and tricks and timing about swarm control. Let's get right into the tricks and tips on making splits and the timing of it. It's really all about four things. Are you ready? It's about queens, how soon your queens will be ready or you can get them or you can make them. It's about drones, how soon your drones are gonna be ready to, to mate with queens. And drones can be used as a marker to know how far we are from swarm season. Thirdly, it's about the weather. Is it gonna be warm enough for my smaller splits to survive any kind of cold snap. And the fourth thing about mite control. Is it better to treat for mites before I make a split or is it better to make a split and then treat for mites? Let's talk about this. Now, when it comes to queens, two things come into play. The first is, are you gonna make your own queens, let them raise their own queens in your splits or do you want to buy queens when you make your splits? couple of ways to do it. Let's, let me walk you through it. Let's say I want to split this hive here, which I need to, um, but it's too early for me to really get queens. Maybe somebody is making them, but I live in Illinois, and as you've already seen, my temperatures are going to be really cold the next few, maybe in the next week, 10 days. So if I made a split, ordered queens, those queens are going to be traveling in temperatures below freezing, and I got news for you carriers, different kind of shipping companies, they're not going to keep your queens nice and toasty warm. They're going to be in cold airplanes or cold trucks along the shipping path. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to have to raise my own queens or let my hives raise their own queens. Let's say today I make a split. It's 70 degrees, but I've got low temperatures below freezing for the next 10 days. That split is in danger of being too cold as a smaller uh, a hive. It's only going to have four or five frames of bees in it and it's going to get cold. They'll do fine, but it's not the best of scenario. Plus, when I make a split, I'm going to make this hive colder as well because I've just walked away or taken off four or five frames or a hole deep. In other words, I divided a nice warm hive. Now, I've taken away the heater because all bees are heater bees on colder nights. So in my situation where I can't get queens for another month probably, and I can't raise them for another month, that's not a good time to make a split. So number one, I think of, can I get queens or can I raise queens or is it warm enough for them to raise queens if I make a split now? And if none of those things work out, can't make a split. It's that simple. It's just a process we can use to help us make this decision. Now let's take the next scenario where we can get queens or we can raise our own. Let's talk about that. Then we start talking about, okay, let's say it is warm enough. We're a month, let's say it's the first of April. And we know that we can start raising queens here in a couple of weeks or maybe right now in the first of April. Then we can make that split and we can start raising our own queens. We can make a split as long as there's eggs on the frames that we're moving over into our split, then they can raise their own queens, or it may be warm enough now for me to purchase queens and put mated queens right into the splits that I make. So that's all kind of about the timing of the queens. And I want these splits to have a queen 
as soon as possible. Now I mentioned drones as a trick or a tip that we can use to help us make these decisions. Right now, as you've seen, I've already got some drones that have emerged, they're flying, they're kind of taking potty breaks outside the hive a little bit, but I can tell these drones aren't mature enough to take mating flights. Number one is not warm enough really to take mating flights. There's no, there's no queens out there yet. Uh, colonies always raise their drones uh, about 14 days before they start even thinking about raising queens. So I'm probably about two weeks away still from even having uh, queens that are starting to be made into queens and that's gonna take uh, maybe another week or two after that. So I'm a month away from having to worry much about swarming. So I've got time. Now you can use this same scenario, use this same math that I'm telling you about. Look at your drones study when they're emerging. Try to figure out, because when, when a drone is uh, emerging and from his cells, then back it up 24 days. And then you get 24 days, he emerges. Once he emerges, he is gonna be at his optimal reproduction age in about two weeks. So the little drone we looked at today, looks like he was just, you know, brand new. So I've got two weeks before they would even think about starting to raise queens in preparation for swarming. So we've got a lot, we've got three to four more weeks. We got a month to go. So use that math. A lot of you might be watching this video and you're saying, well, David lives in Illinois. I'm not sure if I can figure this out. I don't want to watch him because I live in a different place. No, bees are the same. You just have to use different math. Instead of maybe applying it to uh, April, you might apply it to May. Instead of April, if you live in the deep south, you may apply it earlier in March. See, you just apply it differently. You, you use the same biology. It's just that your calendar uh, really means nothing. You're, you're going by the bee's calendar, not your own calendar, because weather is always changing. And that's the next thing we want to talk about, weather. What, what do you use as a marker to tell you when to start making splits? Do you use the weather? Absolutely not. It's 70 degrees in March, first of March, and I'm in short sleeves. I'm not cold. It's really weird. It's a rare meteorological phenomenon here in central Illinois. And I've told you before in recent videos, we can have snow up to here on these hives any day in the month of March. I used to be a track runner in school and we had several track meets that were canceled in April because of snow. Don't apply what I'm telling you to a calendar. A calendar doesn't tell us much. You have to apply it to what's really going on, what the bees are saying. When it comes to weather, you have to look at the forecast and say, when am I out of the woods? Now we can make splits and get by with a cold snap here and there, but we can't make splits and all at once have this terrible blast of sub-zero Fahrenheit temperatures and snow. The bees are locked in their hives for 14, 15 days, and it never gets above freezing. After we make our splits, if that happens, those splits are in trouble. There can be chilled brood that we moved over into our splits, and we can have the threat of things like European fowl brood, chalk brood. We can have more possibility of these diseases showing up on wet, and climates where bees can't fly, nozema can get worse if they can't go out and take potty breaks and they get trapped in these hives in, in a wet spring. That's gonna be dangerous. So we really need to make sure by watching our calendar that we are out of the woods. Now, the last thing I wanna to talk to you about, the question is, what about mites? Is it better to treat this hive for mites first and then make the split or split the hive and treat for mites. But before I tell you that, let me ask you to please subscribe. You guys are really rocking it with subscribing and giving me a thumbs up. It's helping my videos a lot. It brings me a lot of joy to wake up and see more subscribers. Let me thank you in advance for punching that subscribe button and giving me a thumbs up. Now let's talk about mite control making a split. That largely depends on a lot of things, but largely what are you gonna to use to treat with? If you're using something like OA, acetic acid, it's gonna be better for you to make that split first and then treat them with OA because you might find that some of these splits that you're making, you might be uh, more likely with less brood. OA does not kill brood below the caps. Now, if you have a lot of brood anyway, and a cap brood, then 
you might say, I'm going to go ahead and make these splits, but I'm going to try to use something else that uh, will help kill the mites below the caps like Formic Pro. The temperatures might be right in the season where you're making these splits to use something like Formic Pro. You can use the other uh, mite treatments that you need, but I was talking to one of my B-Team 6 members today, and he said he did a mite test coming out of winter. He did an alcohol wash, and he had one mite per 100 bees. And in that low of a number, then I wouldn't even think about it. That's the tricky part. What you're gonna have to do, always test for mites. You may not wanna hear that, but you really do need to decide, I've gotta test for mites to see if a treatment is even necessary. And so you'll just have to use your good judgment. In my case, what I like to do is I like to treat this colony, get these mite levels down uh, before I make my splits. And the reason I like to do it that way is not that one way is better than the other, but it's just my personal preference because I can use the treatment for one hive rather than trying to use it on two separate hives. If I have like 50 colonies and I split all of them one time, I've got 100 colonies that I have to mite manage and use treatment on. Otherwise, I can just do it on 50 colonies. So it, it lessens my labor intensity, you see. So I would rather just look at this colony, take a mite test. If I see my levels are higher than I want them, then I'll go ahead and treat it, try to get the levels where I need it to be, and then I'm gonna split it. The reason I like Formic Pro is if I can get my weather to cooperate in the right zone, Formic Pro is more of a blast. I'm not being paid by Formic Pro. I know some of you have left comments that it kills your queens or hurts your brood. And you know, I'm not gonna doubt that didn't happen to you. But in my case, I need a blast. Some of the other treatments take 42 days. Well, I can't wait that long to make a split, see? That's why I, if I see mite levels high, I need something that can just blast it. And OA is gonna kill adult mites that are out uh, on the bees, but it's not gonna kill the mites that are on the caps. Makes sense for me to use something like Formic Pro, and that way I can get a good instant five, seven day boom, and my mites are killed. Now, with the mite levels low, I can make my splits. That's gonna give me 30 days to recheck them and see how they are in those colonies. Now, we did talk about swarm control in the last live stream, and here's the link to it in case you missed it. Take a look at it right here. I'll see you guys over there.